Ride-hailing service Uber suffered a setback in Taiwan this year as new government rules kicked in to prevent Uber drivers from operating like taxi drivers. Under these new rules, Uber drivers have to charge by the hour rather than by the distance travelled. Also banned is picking up passengers the way taxis do at taxi stands or responding to street hails. Uber drivers believe these rules will ruin their livelihoods, while taxi drivers see the rules as fair. Who's right and who's wrong? Let's investigate in our Sunday special report. It was a striking sight. Thousands of rideshare drivers had taken to Katagalam Boulevard to protest a raft of new government restrictions. Behind them, parked cars spelled out their opposition to the new rules, 1031 No. The rules, listed in Article 1031, imposed restrictions on Uber drivers in Taiwan. They must charge passengers a one-hour minimum fare. Drivers are also banned from lining up at taxi stands and from picking up street hails. Uber drivers worry that these rules would destroy their livelihoods. Previously, the government told us we were within the law. Now you want to turn around and say that this sector is operating illicitly. I feel that these rules are biased in favor of taxi cab drivers. Since launching in Taiwan in 2013, Uber has been locked in a battle with the Taiwanese government. Hit by repeated fines, Uber suspended operations for two months in 2017. It re-emerged as a legal entity registered as a cross-border e-commerce company for tax purposes. In terms of management, taxes and insurance, three things the MOTC has always insisted on, of course we deem this company to have obtained legal status. We are looking forward to seeing it improve this industry with its better technology. But within two years, the tide had turned. The MOTC changed its stance in February, announcing that Uber drivers were operating a taxi service illegally. Taxi operators feel the situation is very unfair. First, they feel it's unfair that the government limits the total number of taxis. In other words, new taxis can't be added to the streets at will, because the total number of taxi licenses is limited. These restrictions don't apply to rideshare drivers working with rental car companies. Since Uber began its partnership with rental car companies, there's been an explosion in the supply of taxi services in urban areas. If we enforce new limits, there wouldn't be new markets to explore. The market players would think, hey, we can just be lazy, there's no need for innovation, customers will need to use us no matter what. When the market has lost its mojo, so to speak, you can rehabilitate it with a dose of competition. What should be phased out from a market are players who are unable to meet the needs of consumers. Another complaint that taxi drivers have is that they're required to use fare meters regulated by the government. Uber drivers use a system called surge pricing, which lets them charge more or less depending on demand. Taxi operators feel that during off-peak times, when Uber lowers its rates, taxi drivers take a hit when Uber prices are dialed down extremely low. And then during peak times, Uber can adjust its fares to be much higher. But taxi drivers are subject to restrictions. Shouldn't their solution be to relax the restrictions imposed on taxis? The introduction of Uber's business model to Taiwan has inspired some local entrepreneurs to create their own ride-sharing platforms, such as Call Car Bar and Join Me. Wang Kequan drives for a private airport transfer service that developed Call Car Bar two years ago. The app was designed to let airport transfer drivers find other passengers in their free time. The nature of being an airport transfer driver is that most people go to the airport in the morning and most leave the airport at night. So I have a lot of downtime, for instance in the afternoon. That is all wasted time. At such time, I can use a call car bar app to supplement my income. With the new rules in place, drivers like Wang Kequan are no longer able to use ride-sharing apps to earn extra income. Officials say that taxis are governed by a set of rules, and to operate as taxis, Uber drivers must abide by the exact same rules. Startup entrepreneurs say that this approach to regulating an industry is outdated.
，比如说，呃，我忘记一个文件好了，我就说麻烦。Say that I forget a document. I might trouble a taxi driver to go get it for me and send it to the FTV headquarters. If you did that, it would be illegal because taxis are not legally allowed to deliver goods. But actually, in practice, this kind of thing happens all the time. For example, taxi drivers will ask passengers if they want to book the cab for the full day. But booking by the day is not within the legal scope of the taxi business. As the clash continues between rideshares and traditional cabs, some in the industry say it doesn't need to be a fight to the death. Actually, we at Uber have never said we are unwilling to be subjected to regulations. It's just that we are an internet-based car hailing platform. For example, Singapore has regulations for online car hailing platforms. The law looks after taxi drivers while leaving room for rideshares at the same time. In Singapore's case, after the regulations rolled out, the taxi industry saw an 18% increase in operational effectiveness and revenue. In the absence of effective regulations, Uber and the taxi industry remain at odds with each other. Critics of the new amendment say that rather than eliminating Uber from the taxi industry, the rules will only push them underground. In the end, making them even harder to regulate.